Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna, and today we've been doing my June audiobooks. Let's get going. So I feel like I've been putting a decent amount of audiobooks, and some were up, but the most of them pretty good as far as the ratings go. Yeah, so let's just get going. So my first book was Spice Word by Maya Ibrahim, and this is like an Arabian inspired lad. She was raised to protect a nation. From the monsters lurking in the sands, 17 year old Imani must fight to find her brother who's betrayal. Whose betrayal is now the greatest threat. So, I gave this a 2 star. And the only thing that I liked about this book is that it's set in the Middle Eastern and the magic system. The magic system was like mad tea magic, so I liked that. I didn't really like money. She didn't do anything spectacular, which sucks because she was supposed to be like this great the genie slayer, warrior, however you want to see it. But she never really did anything despite being constantly told that she was the great. But we just never got to see it. She's also really privileged, but she doesn't even know about it. And everything she had done, like black whaling, she thinks everything will be forgiven when she returned to her brothers, which, no, that's not how it works. Uh, so I kind of found this story to be boring as well, and the characters unlikable, but I do love the description words and of the settings, which I thought it was beautiful. I didn't really like the ending at all. They went for all of these troubles just to not even matter in the end. Like, what kind of ending is that? So. But, but yeah, but as I said before, I did like the magic system and how there were like specific magical spices that were drunk from the tea, so I really, really like that. But otherwise, this story isn't really that special to be honest. My next book is The Last Tale of the Flower Blight by the Shining Korsky, and some of the a stumpy's gothic review story about a marriage that is unraveled by dark secrets and friendship caused just to end in tragedy mm. and the dark danger of believing in fairy tales. So I kind of gave it two stars to three stars. So I think it was just okay. Uh, I, the only thing I didn't really like was this toxic relationship between Indigo and Azul. Like, that was the most toxic relationship I had ever met in my life. So. Wow. I really didn't like Azul. She was, as I said, way too toxic for Indigo, thinking that they had to do everything together. Otherwise, the bond would break. And to me, that sounds pretty toxic. So, yeah, I hated Azul. The writing was a bit rough. I feel like I couldn't really get into it because of the writing, but I do love the description. And the authors seem to know a lot about the fairy tales and the lore, so which also seems really nice, to, you know, just to know a little bit of what you're writing. Uh, but the world building was a little bit confusing, since I wasn't sure what that other world was, and, like, and if it was real or not, and I don't really understand if the magic was real, so that, those guys was kind of confu confusing. But otherwise, um, th yeah, this time was okay, uh, I didn't think I don't know, it just seemed way too toxic for me, to be honest. So, um, yeah. My next book is The Adventures of Amina Asafari by S.A. Chakraborty, and this is where we have a new trilogy of magic and mayhem with the stay of pirates and sorcerers forbidden artifacts and ancient mysteries, and one woman's quest to see as a final chance and glory. So, I get it three stars. I don't think it was bad. Um, the heist could have been done a lot better. Sometimes it would feel like the adventure has gone all over the place, so it's kind of hard for me to keep track of where they were going. And and sometimes it will be dragging for too long just for something to happen. So, I mean, that used to be the great and threatening pirate, but like that she used to be, but then she wasn't. There was like small action, and there was like there wasn't any action to prove that. I didn't really like the villain. She was uninteresting and cliche. Like, you can think of all the things that a villain could be. That is exactly what she is, so... She is that kind of villain. Too much cliche for her. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I also didn't really like the pacing. I thought it was a bit off, and it was a bit too slow sometimes, so... 
eine Länge dann eine. And I thought it had too much words. Like it's a little bit wordy in you know, reading throughout the book. But um and also I didn't really think it kinda of suited it in some way. Like I just felt it was like way too wordy. And so I didn't really like it, but um and it could have been done better, I feel like. It could have been cut down at least partial pages, just because it had no reason to be for this long. But, yeah, I just, uh, it's okay. I just don't really like this book as much. So, my next book is actually an ARC book. So, it's an advanced readers copy where you give the book to the readers and they give you an advanced review before your book is even released. So I think that's very really useful for authors to have. So it's okay if you can't support, but it's just really, really useful for us authors so that we can build up credibility and all that. So it's really useful to have an arc. And that's what I did. So I got an arc from James and his book is Queen's Descent, which is the number one in Breaking of God's Lot. And we have lost, bullied, scared, and breaker of empires. The greatest empire known to God's law has been strong for 600 years, outliving great men, gods, and magic. But with age and size comes decay, the rot in deep, in sleep, in this one. So I get a 3.5. I didn't think it was that bad. Uh, it was an enjoyable read. I did like the pacing, but I feel like the work building could have been done so much better. I feel like it wasn't really stable enough. And then I had an idea of what everything is. And so, uh, but I didn't really like some of the characters, like Lady N and Tan. I really liked those. So I thought they were great. I thought they were, the personalities were amazing. So, yeah. And also, I was also really confused as to how other characters, like Callisto, was able to do mean things to the Princess Delphine and was able to get away with them like, with no consequence. Same thing with the tutor. The tutor was also being mean to the princess, but none of them really got any consequences. So I'm not sure how that works. Like, I feel like they should have gotten something bad just because of how they acted towards her. So it was a little bit weird that they didn't get any consequences, so I don't know. Uh, and the ending was okay, like there was this certain scene on, with the father who was enraged, he was really mad during a battle scene with his daughter, and then all of a sudden he was okay, like happy. Well, he was like really happy, which is settled a little bit, and like that was a fast transition from being enraged to settling, so I don't know. <laughs> so that's kind of weird, so. Yeah, and, but yeah, overall, it was a really enjoyable read. I think everyone should read it, but I feel like the world building could have done a lot better, so I hope he has fixed that, because the world building really does seem promising, so, yeah. My next book is The River of Silver by S. H. Chakraborty. I give it a four stars. And this is basically like a confirmation of stories from the original trilogy, the David Bond trilogy. And we're basically getting from all specific uh, characters that were in the book. So, like, as well as having scenes that were not in the book as planned. So, I actually don't have too much to say about this, but I actually really, really love it. And it was actually this book that got me inspired to reread the David Bond trilogy. Like, I actually really want to do a reread, so I do also want to make a vlog out of it. I think it'll be fun. But uh, basically, I thought it was just a nice addition to the David Bond trilogy. I really like Saint the Bob. I think that was a character, but I didn't think it was his that character where it had the flag. Spoilers. It had like the enemy's flag and how it was raised. I think that was a part of his perspective. And um, I was actually sad that that part wasn't in the book because I really think it would have been such like a huge significance part of the book in the last in of like the finale of the trilogy I think that was happening. So honestly I'm really sad that that kind of made it into the original because just because I feel like it was really important. And so yeah, but it was fun seeing some new characters, some old like Nani and 
It was just a fun read, and I'm, I'm excited and got triggered to reread the original, so I can't wait for that one. My next book is The Residence by Andrew Piper, and this is like a ghost story that is based on the events of the president's, president's late son haunts the White House, threatening all who live in it, and the divided America beyond the walls. So I mean, I've actually known that the White House is haunted, so I thought it was pretty cool to read something of the White House that is said to be haunted. So I ain't gonna four stars. I actually liked it. I thought it was fascinating to have like the mix of the hauntings in the White House. Even as I said before, I already knew that it was haunted. So it was fun to read that spooky aspect of the White House. Um, in the beginning, I felt it was like really sad and despair as well as hopelessness, but terror, but like all the terror and the action was towards the end, so it was kind of like, you know, like a wave almost. <laughs> but uh, I kind of liked how everything was wrapped up. I was a bit annoyed by Jane's behavior, which I understand losing a kid is not easy, it will never be easy, but I feel like Jane's behavior was just a tad overboard. I don't know, it just kind of felt weird, like almost. So I'm not sure how much, like I know this spell will affect you so much, but the way how Jane will has behaved, I'm not sure it will go to that extent. Let me know. But um, yeah, I thought it was a little bit too much. But otherwise, I did like Franklin, you know, who eventually understood what was happening in the White House and what was happening with his wife and how everything just came down. So I thought that was like a really nice touch up and all that because from what I can remember, uh, he kind of didn't really believe what was happening with Jane. He thought he she was making things up, so I feel like him finally coming to his center is like, it was a really nice touch. And my next book is The Unheard by N Nikki, Nichi French. Um, a single mother suspects her young daughter has witnessed a horrible crime as she draws a disturbing picture, but the deadly path to unravel the truth could cost her everything. I gave it a three stars. I didn't really like Tess just because she was annoying and a lot of her actions seemed foolish. Most of the characters were unlikable, but I did like the mystery which I thought it was a done job well done. I feel like there was something, some things that had been repeating and the ending wasn't exciting. It could have been done better, but it just wasn't quite there. It was dull with the police just walking away with the culprit. That was all the ending it was, not just the police taking away the, the murderer. So, yeah, it was just felt completely flat and dull. So, it, I, I thought that could have been done better. And the story seemed to have dragged on quite a bit, but I thought the pacing was good. There were some things that didn't really make sense, and I honestly felt a little bit bored. So, yeah, not not much to say about this book. It wasn't bad, it was just, I don't know, like if I felt like the book could have been more polished. And so, it wasn't bad though. And my next one, I actually done a reading vlog based on this book, so it's Jane File Gold by June C. Hamilton. In an empire on the brink of war, Anne is no one with no past, no family. Elton is a lost here, his future stolen away as a child. When they meet, Elton sees in Anne a path to reclaiming the throne. Anne sees a way to finally unlock her past and understand her arcane magical abilities, but they may have to pay a far dearer price than Anne could have imagined. So I can enforce as I really, really like this. I actually, I actually love Alton more than Anne. I really like the reveal as to who Alton really is, so I thought that was pretty nice. But there was a lot of action, but it, I feel like it kind of got balanced out with the whole world building. And there wasn't like a lot of info dumps, which a lot of books seem to have been doing, so I don't really like that. There was also a character, character development, but 
I didn't see like how something was happening. It seems to be like a lot of things being coincidence at times. Things happened when they needed to be happened. So that kind of sucks, but the ending was okay. I thought it might need more work, but I liked the magic and I also felt like one of the main characters should have died just because of the how the setup was. It was like the setup was right there, but it didn't, so I'm like, no, no, just do it. <laughs> like, I honestly feel Arthur should take a leap of faith and just kill off the characters in all honesty, but um, I know we're not gonna have those authors. But who knows, maybe one author might, and y'all will cry. My next book is Kaike by Mashinavi Patil. I was born on a full moon under an auspicious constellation, the holiest of positions. Much good it did me. So I get a four stars. Um, I thought it was kind of, but even though I gave it a four stars, I thought the book was kind of slowed by the middle part, but I still really loved it. I loved learning about the magic, gods, kings, and queens. I thought all the information that the author provided was really nice. Uh, I then thought the author had done a good job of teaching us about this world. I thought it was well explained and not overly info dumping, so I thought that was a nice touch. I did love the scene of Kaiki and the, like, the, and, like, the whole river. There was like, this whole river scene with her son and Kaiki, so I thought that was actually intriguing, intriguing. And I thought Kaiki was also an interesting, strong character. And I liked the familial relationships were as well then, like the relationship between Kaiki's son's husband and, and her twin brother. I thought that was also well done, so I really enjoyed seeing um, the really relationship between them. And I also didn't feel like most of the decisions that was done by the characters were a bit dramatic. And I wish the harsher consequences for certain characters was in place. I feel like most of the characters that done something bad got away too easy, so I wish the consequences for the action was a little bit harsher. But, um... However, while I did enjoy it, upon reading the reviews, I don't know too much about Kaiki and how bad it is. So I actually might need the original story of Kaiki and maybe my ratings will drop upon reading the original story. Because I have read the reviews and some of them seem to be a little bit mixed, so I might go and read the original. But um, yes. So that's all my audiobooks. Uh, I don't have a TV on, as I said, I'm taking a break from reading. Again, I will read a book here and there. I do have like more writing videos that I want to I want to film and post. So that's exciting. But otherwise, let me know what you have read in June, please, and uh, please like, comment, and subscribe so then you'll be notified every time I post. And I will see you in my next one. Bye.